What's going on, creative people? This is Creativity is an Idea podcast, a source of creativity for creative people. And I am your host, Parik. Today's guest is a special guest. Her name is Simone Patterson. I said it right. Yes. Simone Patterson. <laughs> Simone Patterson. Yes, there you yes. go. Yeah. Say it with conviction. Conviction. <laughs> Simone Patterson. Yes. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. All right. And she is a visual artist or a painter. And today she's here to sort of share her experience, what she has learned, what she has been through in life when it comes to painting, when it comes to getting gigs, when it comes to going to shows back and forth, when it comes to dealing with people. So anybody out there watching or listening, at least I believe you find a sense of um, a source of, I would say, some commonness between mm. what she's about to say. And if you are new, you can also hear something that will help shorten the time frame in, in you achieving your goal when it comes to painting or the visual artist world. Mm. So Simone, tell me, yes. you're going to have a fine conversation. Okay. <laughs> tell me, who are you? Who am I? I'm a intellectual being. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm Simone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 27. I'm originally from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, small city girl. A um, little bit of country in me, I guess. Um, I was born like in North Carolina all my life. Mm -hmm. Well, I was born in California, but I was raised in North Carolina. So, um, but my mother is Asian, Japanese woman. Dad's from New Orleans. So, you got that little thing going on in the pot. So, I just grew up with a lot of cultures around me and I think that's definitely what molded me into who I am today as far as like you know how I am and how I interact with other people from all walks of life and um but yeah um went to school at a and Aggie Pride um graduated in 2014 I went there for psychology got my bachelor's there and since then I kind of try to find my way in search of me after school and I realized that who I was creatively and from then on uh, I'm here <laughs> I guess <laughs> uh, that is that is I'm getting to know you more now see yeah, yeah there you go yeah. so you all are not alone I'm getting to know her more now so tell me how was your childhood like um my childhood was interesting um I grew up like I said I I I grew up as a like a military brat. My dad was in the Marines, so we kind of traveled back and forth. Um, I lived in Japan and Germany and Guam, and I also lived in Louisiana and Georgia, and then I moved, finally moved to um, North Carolina when I was like 11. So a lot of different places and stuff I've experienced, you know, even though at a young age, um, I still feel like Growing up, it kind of still, like I said, it kind of molded me into this person. And I feel like I'm able to, uh, culturally, I'm able to kind of connect a lot better with people because of that, because of my background of moving around a lot. Um, but my childhood was pretty cool. Like, I mean, I mean, I got to see different places. And um, I mean, growing up in the house that I grew up, grew up in, it was interesting because having an Asian mother and then a dad who's black as hell. <laughs> It was like really different concepts and like, uh, you know, just different things going on. Like, you know, like my mom wanted me to raise me this way. My dad kind of wanted me to raise me and my brother this way. So it was like a it was a lot of like different conflicts going on. But I mean, I don't know. I feel like I turned out kind of OK. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm not like, you know, this I'm not like a murderer or anything like that. So I feel like my parents kind of raised me pretty well. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. I like grew up with so much like just culture and like music and just I, all I can remember growing up is one th well, for one thing's for sure. My my mom and dad like made sure me and my brother was like was exposed to a lot. So that way when we grow up, it was it's not like a like a shock to us, mm -hmm. you know, the people that we meet and stuff like that. So um, but that's one thing I know for sure I could take out of my childhood is that my mom and dad like made sure that we, you know, we were we were molded enough to like, you know, 
be accustomed to different things. You know, it wasn't like some different, you know, we were just sheltered in and not exposed to different things. So that I can definitely appreciate my parents for, for doing that for us. So, but yeah, I was like <laughs> a little bit of my childhood, I guess. That is, that is good. That is a good one there. <laughs> no, it sort of, it helped you to not encounter any cultural shock. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, like I, my, I grew up with like Filipinos. I grew up mm -hmm. with people from Africa, people from Hawaii. It's just all different types of walks of life and not even just, just, you know, ethnic cultures, but like, you know, I grew up with like my cousin, I have an old ass cousin when I was, was younger. Like he was like 40 something years old. So I was <laughs> always around like older people oh. and also younger people too. So like I grew up like next door to like my friend, like me and my brother grew up with these like people that were literally in high school when I was in elementary school and they were like well, I looked at them as my brothers and sisters too because we grew up with them and because I always watched over us so it's like different age gaps too so it wasn't just like just strictly limited like ethnic cultures but I just basically was able to learn from all types of different people you know it wasn't but I mean I guess that's what it is like when you live in a military town or something I don't know if that's a different for other people but <laughs> yeah, that is good yeah good to know. so there is something I have a good memory. The you do. I'm you did say that. that. <laughs> I'm not bragging, but I usually forget stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm saying that is there are certain things I can't forget. I cannot forget. Yeah. Growing up and even now. So to know more about you, what are or what is an event that you growing up or just recently that you cannot forget? That I cannot forget. Good or Good bullshitly or... bad. <laughs> um, I don't. Um, I don't want to go like super dark. <laughs> hey, be dark as you want. Now you said it. Super dark. <laughs> I think I'm interested. I'm curious to know what. Yeah. Um. Well. I don't, okay, there's like different moments, I guess, but I want to say, okay, well, I guess one thing I could say growing, like, like when I was younger, that affected me greatly was probably like dealing with, um, I guess, sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was younger, uh, I just had like someone that felt really close to family wise mm -hmm. and that happened and it was that I can't really ever forget but I mean it felt like it 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 didn't affect me at all which was weird when I was at that moment now I had to be like it was like from seven to ten and like it didn't really affect me from like middle school like elementary school middle school I didn't think about it for me it was just kind of like whatever you know because I didn't really understand what was going on and then it really didn't really affect me until I went to college or not even that, maybe probably a little later than that. Almost, I want to say, um, but only because like when you get older, you kind of like you try to block out all the stuff that kind of happened to you that you felt like, you know, traumatically affected you because you feel like, OK, I'm good. Like, you know, I'm older now, you know, like it's there's nothing going on that I'm not still like unless you're still like connected to that person. I have not seen that person since I was like 10. So for me, it's like, OK, water under the bridge. Right. But. I notice sometimes with like interactions with other people romantically that it gets kind of like weird because of that. So I had to face that a couple years ago, um, like head on with it. And I mean, from from that point on, it's kind of like I just kind of forgave and let go because it's like it's something that I feel like spiritually wouldn't allow me to grow as a person had I not done that so but that was that was probably one traumatic experience that I would say affected me that I can't forget you know even after forgiving you still can't forget can't right forget. yeah yeah so but yeah <laughs> still roams around in your brain like oh okay yeah Never mind. it's like you know in the back of your head but it's like an itch like you still have to scratch it even though you try to avoid it it's like yeah but I had to do it for my own 
spiritual self mm -hmm. to grow as a person, like to just let it go. Because it, I did become a little more like I did get angry a little bit at the situation. I felt like, especially like, I felt like I didn't have because I did talk to like my parents about it. I told my mom about it. My mom wasn't as, I mean, she understood what was going on, but I feel like my mom was almost a little bit in denial. Mm -hmm. So I kind of resented her from that too. So, which made me want, which was just the main reason why I had to face the issue at the time that I did, because I love my mom, but I was like, I'm not about to live my life being angry towards her. I should just bring it up and figure it out. And it was that moment where, you know, I fixed it. Well, not fixed it, but I just kind of decided to forgive at that moment and let go. Because also, you know, being able to get me get my me and my mother's relationship back on track, too. So, but yeah. <laughs> that is quite personal. <laughs> it was. It was crazy. I've never really said it on a podcast hey, before. Let me tell but you. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's going to be... In a public record now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe, yeah. Um, you are not alone. I yeah. know a lady who has been through what yeah. you've been through, and she expressed it to her mom, and the mom wasn't really proactive about yeah the whole thing. Yeah. It's sort of something else, you know. Yeah. It sucks when it's like your own mother or your dad. You know, well, my dad doesn't really know the extent of the situation, but, you know, when you're your own mother, I feel like, if, I, if I'm a mom and my child's telling me this, it's like, of course, I'm going to believe my child. But sometimes it gets complex being the person that it is. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, OK, like, I don't know if maybe you just thought you, that happened or, you know, you start to kind of doubt, but it still hurts because it's just like you're my mother, you know. Mm -hmm. So but um, but I think it made my, me and my mom closer now after that situation, like after talking, like re, re, revisiting the situation. Because when I first said it, I don't think my mom really understood or try to understand, but now that I'm older now, I feel like my mom didn't, she knew it hurt me, but she just didn't know to like how it affected me, the situation isolated alone. Mm -hmm. But now that, you know, I'm older now and I talked about it again with her, she's just like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm sorry. And I don't know, it just, it, it made us a lot more closer. I feel like my mom's able to really understand what, how it affected me growing up. So, well, but yeah. Audience, I am <laughs> going to purposefully digress <laughs> thank how, you <laughs> how did you get over it how did i get over the situation uh, yeah if you okay. should summarize it how did you um okay how did i get okay because it was two things the the whole sexual abuse thing or how my mother didn't like now that it doesn't really bother you oh well it doesn't bother me anymore because like i said i i when I brought the situation up to my mom a few a few years ago about it, mm -hmm. that was kind of the moment where I was like, okay, I'm gonna let go of it. I gotta forgive her and the guy, the per the person that did it. And I mean, seriously, it was like a switch. I think when I just literally let emotions like like emotionally let go of it was I when I decided to just forgive and like move on with my life because I was holding on to it, but I wasn't like holding on to it like, oh, I'm gonna bring it up every time yeah, yeah i was just like i was holding on to it almost at a point where i was just like sweeping under the rug mm -hmm. but it was like I, I can't keep doing that like it was literally gonna pile up and then be this huge lump on this rug if i don't clean it out so i don't know i just i felt it was time to bring it up and when i did you know i it just kind of was like literally like water under the bridge it's just like i just let go of it you know I, whatever happens that's up to god at this point you know, I can't be this person that is vengeful or holds this over my head and his head and whoever's head all for, for years to come. I'm not going to grow from that if I do that. So I had to let go for myself. It was more so for me. I mean, forgiveness is always about the person that wants to forgive. <laughs> so, so for me, I was just like, I wanted to forgive and I wanted to let go. So like I said, I just kind of gave it to, to God at that point. It's like he'll take care of it. You know, so <laughs> you, you made God take the wheel. Yeah. So now let's take the wheel back onto track. Okay, skirt, skirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how did you get the idea to start doing what you're doing now? Uh, how I started basically painting. What made yes. me want to paint? Painting, yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I always sketched 
when I was younger, even when I was younger, like if you look at like my old, like my dad tells me this all the time, like all the old Bibles in the house, we have like 80 Bibles in the house. I don't know why, but, <laughs> but like I would literally take the Bibles and like scribble on them, like on all Whoa. the pages. Right. But I'm like sketching them. And my dad was like, I was really mad you did it, but they were good. I was <laughs> like, oh, thanks. You know, he was like, yeah, you did a couple good sketches in there. I was like, I don't know why you couldn't do it in a regular sketchbook, like normal human being. But I was like, uh, I don't know. Bible. <laughs> So, um, but I didn't start painting until 20, I want to say 2015 or tw yeah, 2015 or 2016 is when I started painting. Um, to be honest, it kind of, I don't know where it came from. Like I, what made me first start painting period, I started, I painted this jacket, right? And it, it was, this was during the time when like police brutality was like super heightened like every other news channel you were seeing somebody an unarmed, unarmed black man getting shot and I think it had happened I think something had happened in Charlotte a matter of fact and I really am mad at myself that I don't remember the guy's name but rest in peace but he actually um he got killed here a couple like around 2015 2016 mm -hmm. he was unarmed as well um I think after that moment it kind of just was like it frustrated me to see that going on. So I made a jacket. I had this old denim jacket and I just wrote, um, stop killing us on it in like big red, like letters, like, and I painted it to look like blood and I was just painted on it. And like, I posted it on my Instagram and my Twitter and like went nuts. Like everybody was like, Oh my God, like I want that jacket. Can I get that jacket? And, uh, and I was like, you know, I was just sick. I was, I was playing with it. I was like, oh, okay, you know, I was just, if you want it, yeah, that's cool. I'll make a couple. And it just started kind of going from there. And then I was like, you know what? Let me paint on a canvas this time. Like, mm -hmm. jackets are cool, but let me do actually on a canvas and see what happens. And um, my first painting I did was actually funny enough because I have like, this Kanye painting right here. My first painting was Kanye um, when he was at Madison Square Garden playing the Pablo album for the first time there was like an image of him with his arm stretched out mm -hmm. and um he was over the dj booth and you know he was i think he was playing ultralight beams and um it was a picture i saw on pinterest and i just basically paint i finger painted it actually i didn't even use a brush and it turned out real cool like i showed my friends and they were like oh okay like you got something going on there so from then on it just kind of manifested itself and uh, i'm here at 2018 like you know two it's years it's strong it's doing it grinding and doing it yeah yeah, yeah. better <laughs> a lot better, better. Wow. <laughs> at this point you, you know i have a question okay i have an answer good <laughs> uh, who do you look up to as an icon good question I actually don't really have a person a person that I look up to like in that light. I have I have inspir people that inspire me. Mm -hmm. Kanye is a person that inspires me in the in the in a form of the fact uh, as far as musically how he's how sonically he's able to figure out like how to make music in the way that he does. And I just like people that have like a lot of ambition and, and drive mm -hmm. and I feel like creatively, creative people, all types of creative people inspire me, but I can name a couple people, but I can't say I have like a, a person I consider like an icon or like an idol or anything, but because I feel like in that form, when I say it that way, it's almost like godlike, and I don't ever want to like make someone who bleeds the same way I do, someone that I praise in that sense, that makes sense, but I do have people that I'm inspired by though, inspired. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, like I said, Kanye West inspires me. Um, who else inspires me? <laughs> it's like, there's like different forms. Like he inspires me creatively in music sense. Then you have like fashion wise. Oh, he also inspires me that way too. Cause I feel like fashion wise, he's done so like many great things. Ooh. Um, but, uh, Kanye, Kanye okay. J Cole also is someone I feel like I inspire. I I'm very inspired by just by like how he handles, um, fame and just, just the way like he his demeanor and uh, how he how he is like as a person is inspirational to me um who else would say um i don't know i, I can't yeah. think of the top of my head other than yeah. those two maybe <laughs> i feel you on that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay there is this law 
Oh, gee, I need to read this law so that I can recite it. Okay, it's what's the law? It's the Newton's law. law. Okay. Newton's third law. The third law says, I'm going to paraphrase. In order for you to go up, you have to leave something behind. Okay, kind of like what a, what must go, what goes up must come down. Not in that sense, but you know, oh, okay. let's say a rocket. When a rocket is going up, mm -hmm. it sort of dispatches certain things so that it keeps going, it keeps shooting. Up, okay, up, yeah, up, up. yeah. So in order for you to be lightweighted to move up, mm -hmm. you have to let certain things go. Mm -hmm. So what okay. did you have to stop doing, or what was stopping you? when you wanted to or when you started painting um i had to probably stop doubt because i was really doubting i was i'm very i feel like even to this day i still am very doubtful mm -hmm. um i'm really hard on myself i'm very self-critical and i kind of like i don't like a lot of attention because i just feel like i'm I'm not this person that I, I feel like I, I can be just yet. Mm -hmm. So, but when I first started painting, it was like, I was really unsure. I was like, uh, you know, people are, people probably don't think I'm like, they'll probably look at this and think it's like a joke or like, I don't know. Like I just did not think anyone would take me seriously with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, but as I kept doing it, the more confidence I was building with my, within my own self. Mm -hmm. So um, I just had to realize that, you know, you got to take take yourself seriously in order for others to take you seriously. If you come at your if you think of yourself as a joke, that's how people are going to approach you. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was just like, you know what? I get I'm just going to take myself seriously and put in the work and the effort and I'm going to show people that I'm putting in the work and the effort, putting time into this and it's not just like something I'm just trying to do like just to do it. So, so slowly but surely people were seeing how passionate I was really about it. And it created like, you know, people, these, you know, all these people like understanding where I'm coming from and appreciating my work at the end of the day. So, but I would say as far as like what I had to let go, I had to let go the the self-doubt. Self yeah, yeah, self-doubt. Self-doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. We all doubt ourselves. Yeah. From time to time. Yeah. But if yeah. you know you can do it, you, sometimes you just got to just put your best foot forward and, you know, like... We, that's just with anything that I do. Mm -hmm. It's not just painting. It's just like if I feel like I have the potential to do something, like I will never know if I can do it if I, unless I actually do it. So um, I just had to push myself a lot. I push myself. I'm very like, like I said, I, like I'm so critical of me that I don't. I I, I just fear doing the doing anything because I just feel like I'm just gonna fall on my face. But being in the creative world, I feel like it's kind of like it's okay to do that, which I love. Like I love that. I love that aspect that you can mess up. No one cares because that's what you do. And when you're creating, you're going to mess up. Mm -hmm. that, that's expected to happen. So nothing's ever perfect. And it's all about perspective too. So it's like, nothing has to be a straight line. It's going to look straight to someone who somebody is going to think it's straight. So I just kind of have to roll with the, with the punches with that. But I'm, I'm like, for me, it's just building confidence. And I've along the way over the years, it's really helped me like just as I'm painting and putting in more, you know, effort and time into my passion has helped me like, you know, feel more confident about my work. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> what, what you, you just said sort of clarify something I wanted to know. But okay. I'll ask it again. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> what did you have to do consistently or gradually for you to see this process, uh, this gradual progress you're seeing now. Um, what did I have to do to do in order to do that? Just to, yeah, put in. I guess just putting in the work. Um, there's this um book. I don't remember the author's name, but uh, I used to read like excerpts from it. But uh, it's called Ten Thousand Hours, mm -hmm. and uh, it's basically about like. Putting in the tenth that like any anything you want to excel at, mm -hmm. they say there's a formula to it and the amount of hours that you put in in order for you to be considered skilled at it, mm -hmm. which is ten thousand hours. So, when I did painting full time, which mm -hmm. was like I quit my job last uh, last year, I think it was like August. It was like towards the middle or end of the summer, and I from then on decided to just paint full time. 
and which was the biggest risk I probably have ever done. <laughs> I don't know how, but I managed to pay my bills and I managed to pay my rent and I was able to do all that just by doing full time. And it was hard. It was the, probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Just, just, you know, abandoning, you know, livelihood, secured live, livelihood for something that, you know, that could, could go right, could go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but it made me that time frame made me who like made me who I am right now. I feel like because I would wake up every day and just paint, wake up every day. I wake up like at eight, nine o'clock. I would think of concepts beforehand and I would just paint them. And I was doing that every day. And I feel like it was helping me refine myself, you know, just by painting different pieces. It's just, I figured out, Oh, this looks better this way. Or this type of paint look is better when I, if I'm doing this type of shape or, you know, this, this, this makes it look be uh, better when you blend, you know, just different techniques. I kind of t taught myself, you know, and being self-taught, is hard because you're not I don't have the refined skills or mm -hmm. resources but at the same time I get to play with it like I get to figure it out on my own which makes it more better because it's like damn I learned it on my own I didn't have to have a teacher in front of me or I didn't have to take these classes or these courses I just figured it out on myself and I achieved it after a couple tries and boom I'm doing it you know so but just putting in the work is like what really helped me just, you know, every day pushing myself, putting in those 10,000 hours, which I'm still working on. I'm not probably ever, I'm not even close yet, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was just like, just putting in the work and like, you know what I'm saying? Like just learning new things every day. It just, it made me feel better about myself. Cause I'm just like, just, and you when you're physically seeing it manifest too, that's what really makes you proud of your work. Cause you're just like, I, it, my piece from like, from like 2015 and I look at pieces now it's like damn like you could see such a great like progress going on so but yeah that's what I would say like I had to do in order to kind of get to where I am now <laughs> that is good and uh, this you know I want, I want to know sort of an uh what I'm about to ask you I want to know more about you how you able to manage to paint full time how you how you organize it how you are going to events how you able to get gigs because mm -hmm. someone out there hmm. <laughs> wants to know <laughs> oh yeah not kidding <laughs> well any tips you could give um well as far as um i always get that question to a lot of people that like when i go to the shows and like you know people uh, come up to me and like you know how do you where do i go to like book this or do that i actually follow like on my Instagram, my Twitter, I just follow all these random like artists. And um, there's this guy I follow. I don't know his name, but his, he's on Twitter. And like he is so awesome for like he retweets everyone. Like he's an artist himself. He's from Greensboro. But he retweets a lot of artists that come on his page. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's like all these artists that like like every day I feel like he retweets somebody new. And it it, it makes me want to like do the same thing, like share your share these people's works because they're they're that bomb. But at the same time, when I'm uh, when I follow them they even when they're especially if they're from North Carolina they often post the gigs that they're doing like you know they'll post a show that they're they have going on or event they have going on and then you know for me I kind of like if I feel like it's something I could I, if it's someone I can reach out to I'll do the same thing I'll like find their contact information and be like hey like are you guys having like something if you are you know how much is it to be a to showcase your work or how much is it to be a vendor mm -hmm. um I've literally was I I do that to this day I do that like I if I see another artist and they're promoting an event and it's far enough time for me I could go, I could be like oh okay I could probably email this person real quick and see if they still have, you know, they're looking for anybody to showcase at their event. But that's really key and vital. I feel like just follow a lot of artists, especially around your area. If you're from Charlotte, just try and follow a lot of different Charlotte artists or even just go to the events, mm -hmm. like, you know, go to the shows and then, you know, meet the people that are, are a network. If you meet the people that are hosting it, hey, ask them like, hey, when's the next event or when's the next show? I love to showcase at that event. You know, I've done that a lot and it's helped me like I used to just do maybe like one show every like two three months and now I try I, I do like maybe two a month on average if I would do more but I just have so much going on but but yeah it's that will that helps like just networking and putting yourself out there mm -hmm. and also just following different people on different social platforms and you know just looking at like I'm pretty sure when I post stuff I always post like um 
especially events, I will post the person that's hosting it mm -hmm. or tag the person that's hosting it. So that way, whoever wants to do the show as well, hey, there's their Instagram handle. You can just, you know, hit them up, hit them DM up. them. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is um, some some nuggets. <laughs> some gems. Yeah. Some gems right there. It's sparkling now. <laughs> so this, this is the core of the show. Okay. A source of creativity. Mm-hmm. For creative people right so let me ask you dear simone <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> what is your source of creativity how do you get inspired to do what you're doing um i would say my where i get my inspiration from is a lot of music I love music so much. Like I listen to music every day. It's something that, you know, I feel like helps. If I didn't have painting or if I didn't have art, mm -hmm. music would have would be my source of like, you know, it would help be what I I go to. Even it still is where I go to 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 help calm me down sometimes, but I literally grab a lot of my inspiration from what I hear and what I see. Um I'm a visual person. Mm -hmm. I, I I get appealed a lot by looking at things. So, like, I'll look at music videos. Sometimes I'll just even just go outside and, like... But what's funny is how, I, like, the timing of my inspirations. Because I'll, like, literally... I won't, I won't, I'll see, I'll go to different shows, I'll listen to albums, especially like what's going on, what's, what's, it's kind of happening to me right now, I'm like having this like dry spell, and it's like, normally I, I always have a concept going on in my head that I want to play out on canvas, mm -hmm. but lately I haven't had anything, like I don't know what, what it, what's what it been going on, but I haven't been really inspired, but today it, it, I've like, I got some stuff going on now, but but uh, the timing of the, the of my inspiration is funny because it's like it'll happen out of nowhere. Like sometimes I'll like take a shower and like I don't know, like come right to my head, like oh shit, like if I if I paint this and do this, it'll look bomb. Like okay, yeah, like you know, but sometimes it'll just it won't hit me until later on. But like I was sometimes like right now I was in a like lately but up until today I was in a funk because it was just like damn like I, I don't know what's going on like I'm listening to this J Rock album which is awesome I love the album please listen to that Redemption um, J Rock's album I'm listening like to J Cole's albums I'm listening to we have all this music coming out too like Meek Mill just came out with something it's just all this new music now normally I get inspired I'm like yo I want to do this it's just nothing clicked like I don't know like I was like dang like, I'm like sitting in bed after work and I'm laying down I'm just like I just don't know what to paint today like. I don't get it so but yeah it's just weird like the the flow of energy mm -hmm. or that like the vibrations that happen in my head like the timing of it so but I don't know sometimes I feel like like God's probably telling me oh, you just need to relax and chill out and sit down <laughs> like it's okay to like you know to, to chill out on painting a little bit so I feel like I needed I needed that break maybe to just rest up so mm -hmm. but I got some things cooking up now. Cooking Thank up. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something is cooking up. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> guess what I saw on your page, on your story? What? what? You said you hate uh, um, artist block. Yes. Yeah. 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 I was just seeing you noticing. Yeah. yeah I, was go I was going through it yesterday. I was like, I was getting frustrated. I was like, I was sitting in front of like my canvas and I was sitting there for, I had got off at got off work at like four and I was like, I'm gonna come home. And I was originally what I was going to do is do an album cover of, I don't know if you listen to Dom Kennedy, but he has this um, album called the yellow album. And I was going to do the cover of it, you know, in the style that I do my paintings like, but I was just like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So I was just like, okay, let me going to do this idea. And then I was as I'm sketching I'm like erasing every two seconds and I'm like I don't like this either so I'm like getting frustrated I was just like why do I not have an idea because I normally do I'm always like there's so many things that ping through my head mm -hmm. but I was drawing blanks so I was just like I don't know if I need to smoke or if I need to like I don't know what I need to do to like get like inspired but <laughs> dang yeah I was just like you know and I posted that and you saw that yesterday yeah. so but today, like, I don't know, it just hit me, like, on my way to work. I'm just like, 
oh gosh okay it makes sense now I don't know what I want to do so I have like two ideas that I want to play with for the next two weeks I'm gonna be working on that so I got I'm excited about it too so I like when I'm being when I'm excited about excited. a concept because now it just makes me motivated to do something as opposed to like I, I don't want to go home and not do nothing I just feel kind of makes me anxious for some reason I just get like anxiety just going home and not doing anything with my hands so I was just like now that I have like something to look forward to when I get home so so, yeah <laughs> that is that is beautiful <laughs> that is beautiful and i believe uh most people out there will resonate with you yeah i i uh, think people will probably understand things do happen in the shower yeah they do i wish there was <laughs> something that will record whatever goes on in our head so that when we step out of the shower we will have it down yeah yeah yeah, yeah. get some light bulbs like oh ding 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 yeah yeah it's weird it, it really it really is like yeah. sometimes you just gotta i'll just i was literally just standing in the shower for like 15 minutes not even doing anything i was literally just standing there <laughs> and i was just like oh shit i don't okay all right so then my wheels start turning and then uh -huh. i get i got excited i'm like oh yeah now i finally got my mojo back a little bit so <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's really good that's really good that's really good mm -hmm. what the things you just said are really really important and to repeat what i just said most artists out there or painters or anybody in the creative industry will resonate with you yeah i do resonate with you mm -hmm. when you were saying certain things i'm like shoot hmm, okay yeah, yeah i felt happy yeah. i felt like some like-minded you know i felt yeah. I, I felt some sense of sense of belonging mm. in a group of people mm. and what really goes on in their mind yeah and why they feel the urge to create and why why they feel frustrated sometimes when they are not able to produce what they feel they can produce yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel yeah. on that I yeah on that. <laughs> some end up being depressed yeah yeah, yeah. You can't go that route yeah, you cannot go that route <laughs> That is beautiful. <laughs> so now you are a painter. I wanted to be a painter. My 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 dad was like, "Oh, you just want to be painting." <laughs> yeah, I had a business mind. I wanted to build a business out of it, like set up a shop, big shop, mm. recruit um, hire people who will be training, will be doing, we'll be doing graphic stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. the goal. Yeah, when I was in Ghana. Oh, okay. But it never when happened. Now, now. <laughs> I don't want you to go to the health field to be a nurse. Hey, mm -hmm. I quit. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm very appreciative for anybody who brought me up. My mom, my dad, my teachers, my friends, anybody, everybody. I'm very appreciative, whatever I went through. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm not a painter. Okay. <laughs> I can paint. I used to paint real good. Uh-huh. Probably the paint behind your back, I did it. Oh, wow. I just lied. Yeah, uh, let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> let's carry on. Wow, you got me too. I'm like, what? That's Hell you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I bought it online. <laughs> hey, let's carry on. So, Good one. <laughs> since I'm not a painter, uh -huh. what you can express more about your industry. So what are your views? What are your views about the industry? Your personal views or whatever you know? Um, well... I feel like when, when I when I what I won't limit it to just painting. I would I would just say the creative world because mm -hmm. you know it's just it's it's so vast and there's so many different types of people and I don't know. I, I even though I call myself a painter, I would probably would say vis like a cre a creative mm -hmm. because not only do I paint, but I feel like the ideas that I have or the concepts that I create, they're mine. And I feel like even though like you know I am able to physically produce that on a canvas like just the idea alone that I have I feel like that makes me a creative person because I have that I have the I'm visualizing something that can be created physically either I do it or someone else does it mm -hmm. um but I would I, I don't know like stipulations like it's funny when you said that as far as like you know growing up you said you know you were kind of on track or on route to do this but you ended up doing something different it's like for me like growing up like I 
liked the anything creative wise like I was always like hands on mm-hmm. I, anything project wise I remember like growing up and in, in, in school like I would always want to do something if if it was either the you know you can either write this mm-hmm. or you can make this as, as part of your project I always did the making part because I always wanted to like that was just to me it just came natural so I don't know like growing up my parents kind of pushed me to kind of um go to school and be not not like a a doctor they just wanted me to to take on a role that they felt that was prestigious that was either the lawyer route the doctor route or you know anything that was like a of a of a high you know quality i guess profession and you know for me i kind of felt that pressure in high school especially i was like dang i got to I got to figure out what I want to do in school, but you know, my parents want me to do this. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll just do that. So, um, I don't feel like my dad would have taken me seriously. He mm-hmm. still kind of, I don't know. My dad doesn't really, so su- not that he doesn't support, he just has a funny way of showing it. I don't know if it's because he doesn't really believe that I, I can do a lot with art. Uh-huh. So, um, but I felt that way when I was in, like growing up, I just felt like he, he didn't want me to go any type of direction that he knew wouldn't really make me like guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. So, um being especially like I was the first uh person on his side. Oh, no, I was the first person on my mom's side to actually go to college. On my dad's side I had play, my aunts went to college all of them, but nobody really finished and I only have like maybe two aunts that actually were like doing anything with their lives. Like one of my aunts, she's actually a psychologist herself. She's like really known in Baton Rouge, you know. So my dad kind of kind of put that upon me and it's like, "Okay, I want you to do the same thing, you know." So I just went to school for that. I went to school for psychology and I you know, I was like, "Okay, I'll just and I felt like after I got my degree, it made my dad super proud. And he was just like, hey, I need you to go back to school. And I was like, okay. And mm-hmm. I did it. I did like a year in grad school. I went online. And I hated it. Hated it. Oh, my God. I hated it. Like every day it was a paper. And it wasn't just a paper. It was a 10 to 20 page paper. And it was like thesis. We had to like read these articles and then summarize them and then all these it was just horrible and I hate writing already enough as it is so it's just being that every assignment was a written product it was just like oh my god I want torture torture like it was to the point where I literally was like fuck it I'm going to just copy and paste because I just don't care if I get you know in trouble I get in trouble it's just like I just cannot write no more and it just made me like I just I just hated it and I was like I didn't tell my dad, but I graduated, I mean, I uh, dropped out, and I was just like, I don't want to do this, and then um, I kind of had to figure it out, like, you know, Simone, what do you want to do, what, what you got to figure it out, you can't just not go to school, so, um, and like I said, that's when I picked up, you know, painting, and, you know, so, I don't know, like, I guess to, I don't want to digress too hard, but it's just, I guess, you know, to say what, what I would say, like, the art world, or the creative world, you know, the stipulations, and, like, the assumptions of people that are in that world I feel like people tend to think that you know you can't make money off of it and I think that's why my dad you know going back to the example of my whole with my dad and stuff my family Mm -hmm. I feel like they don't think it's a career that is stable enough and I but you know there's so many things you can do as a creative and it isn't like I said it isn't limit you don't have to limit yourself to just painting and you know some just that one thing I just feel like people get people pay you for your ideas alone you know Mm -hmm. people want you on your camp because you think this way or you think of things in the way that you think oh if I do it this way you know say for for instance like a production team on Mm -hmm. like on a show you know you could you people are hired every day for like their thoughts and ideas of how things should be set up on a set to make it look like 10 times better you know what I'm saying and I feel like that's dope like to get paid for just for your ideas alone and you know I feel like you know people don't think it's like a substantive like career but it I feel like if especially in the being that you're a creative mm-hmm. I feel like it's so much passion in it and it makes you feel so much better when you're when you know you're being appreciated for something that you're really passionate about and like I said, it, it could be basketball people or it could be, you know, something as little as like if you like dumping uh-huh. trash and you're good at it and you're passionate about it. I don't know who is, but right. if you are, <laughs> but if you but if you are and you're getting paid for it and, and the amount that you feel like you should get paid, hey, then 
awesome. That's awesome. I feel like that just the idea of that, I feel like is just awesome. Like being paid or being recognized for something that you love and that you wake up thinking about, like, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's an assumption that people kind of have is like, oh, they don't, they can't do much with it, but Mm -hmm. you could do so much with, with just being a creative person. Yeah. So amazing. Anybody out there, if you're listening. (laughs) No uh, shade to nobody that takes yeah. out trash, but I was just using that as a very bad example. So it's, it's a business that people are running. So I yeah. believe it's a, someone's got to do it. You know? Hey, yeah. <laughs> it has been around for a very long time, so it means they are making money. Not kidding. Right. I agree. If they don't make money, they'll go out of business. Exactly. Real quick. Exactly. Like yesterday. Yeah. Wow. I don't want to be a trash man because I have a lot on my table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> at this point, we're going to wrap up Simone. So we're going to gossip. Ooh. Ooh. Let, let's just. Let's spill the tea. Yeah, we're going to gossip <laughs> a little bit. We are going to vent. We are going to sort of wine and bitch. Oh, okay. About certain things. I didn't say it. That wasn't me. <laughs> About certain things. So, <laughs> what public events or public person or celebrity or issue out there do you want to compliment, vent, or discuss? Um, Good or bad? I know there's one thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about Kiki. <laughs> Kiki, where are you? <laughs> there's like, I don't know if you heard the Drake song, but there's like this phenomenon going on. And it's like, have you heard the Drake song? It's called In My Feelings, right? Mm-hmm, and there's like, mm-hmm. Kiki, do you lo- do you know that part? Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw it on Instagram today. It, yeah. And there were... So someone had a caption. Where is Kiki? Yeah, Kiki where is come. please? Where is Kiki? Where, where is she? Because she needs to come and talk to Drake and tell yeah, him that she on. does love him because and she is writing and she is beside him because this song is getting on my nerves. And like the crazy <laughs> part is like Drake's album tonight. It hasn't been a month yet. Maybe it's been out for like three, two, three weeks. And I knew it when I listened to the song because his album was like. By the way, his album was like. I would give it six out of ten. It was not really that awesome to me, mm-hmm. but it, it wasn't bad either. I actually enjoyed the album, but it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. But like, I knew immediately that song was gonna be like top five hit because it was just like how it sounded. I was like, oh yeah, everyone's either gonna play this at the club, at the strip club. They're gonna play this, you know. But now it's turned to a like I guess because now it's, there's a dance associated with it. Um, with the song, I feel it's like this phenomenon now. It's like everywhere I've looked for the past two weeks, when I scroll down, there is a video <laughs> of someone doing someone. the dance. Like they did it like on Shade Room. There was um, someone that, from NASA mm-hmm. who oh. did the dance. And I was just like, I mean, it's aw- I mean, okay, I don't want to like be like a oh, party pooper, like, oh, like, you know, it's, this, is, this is positive. Like everyone, Spoiler, like- Drake got. <laughs> Drake, you know, Drake got everybody dancing and stuff. And actually, Shiggy did because he was the one that started the dance. But I feel like it is now the song. I, I can't, it's like I'm almost dreaming when I, when I dream. It's in that song. <laughs> like Kiki's in my dreams now. And I don't want Kiki in my dreams. <laughs> like, it's so I hate how like, like I said, I don't want to be a party pooper. And it's great that people are like, this is like sparking up like a nationwide type of thing. Like mm-hmm. people are doing this shiggy dance challenge for this da- for this song, and it's great. But at the same time, it's just like we will take something and run with it, and we won't stop running with it. And it's not now it's the song that I love. Now I don't like it because yeah, I, like I keep it. hearing it every two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> like damn, like I was like, yo, this song is not even three weeks old, and it's like. People are, it's like, I, every, I don't even, I'm afraid to even click on a video now because I feel like someone's <laughs> going to dance to this song and I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to listen to yeah. it no more. Yeah, trying to spoil your taste. Yeah, you know, like, oh my God, I'm like, I can't even enjoy nice things for a little while before someone fucks <laughs> so it up. Kiki, if you're out there. <laughs> if you're out there, yo, please, talk to your man. Talk to Drake. You love him, okay? Yeah. Tell him you do and get the hell on. <laughs> Wow. That is excellent, Simone. Yeah. Um, at this point, I have a last question I want to ask you. And okay. 
Anybody out there? I think you probably answered those. The question I'm about to ask you. Mm-hmm. The question is, Simone. What would you tell someone who is starting, or some some things you wish you knew when you were starting? Hmm. Okay. What I would say to someone who's starting off is probably okay. Put in. You're gonna put in a lot of hours in this especially if you're new to it if you already have the talent or like if you're super good already and you're just like just now making yourself like you know accessible or you know selling your work then there's a difference like but if you're just starting you know and you want to be a painter or artist or whatever you know you're gonna have to put in that work you're gonna have to like I said you're gonna put in that 10,000 hours and you gotta make yourself good at a master a master you need to make yourself a master of whatever you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. So you have to put in a lot of work and time and effort. And if it's something that you're serious about, then you're going to have to take some sacrifices and risks in order to, you know, do it. It's going to cost money for sure. Um, <laughs> it's not easy. You can't just, you know, canvases and paint brushes and paint is not, is not cheap, but um, you're going to spend some money. You're going to lose a lot of sleep. You know, there's been times where I literally have run off of only two hours of sleep, like, you know, going to work the next day because I was busy doing something, you know, for a show. So, but you're going to lose sleep. You're going to, you're going to probably not go out a lot. I've actually wasn't like when I did painting full time, Mm -hmm. I had to force myself to go out like with people because I was so, I was inside so much and they can kind of mess with you a little bit. That's why it's always good to get a, keep a healthy, a healthy uh, balance. Cause if you just stick to just painting all day long or creating all day long, it's going, you're going to drive yourself insane and it's almost going to mess with you. So it's always good to try to like keep your life a little balanced, like do the, do the creative aspects part of your life, but then also just make sure you're, you're able to get at least some type of human interaction. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, you you just got to realize those points that there's going to be things that you're going to have to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And then once you once you realize that and you're willing to put that work in, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take some time, but you know what I'm saying? Just just you got to stick with it, you know. And also, I would say one specific thing that I would have probably have told myself when I first started, like the new me now would have told my old self, like pricing how I price my work I used to like I can't believe some of the stuff I sold like I was basically like almost free like it was like giving out canvases for like 40 60 Mm dollars so like I was telling this uh this girl at this last show I went to she was like asking me about how how do you price stuff how do you go about pricing your 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 canvases and to be honest with you I told her I was like if you are that confident with your work shoot for the highest number if you even if you think it's stupid or you think it's like the like it's it's no one's gonna buy it then the people that that can't buy it don't have no they don't have no business buying it uh, they are not your market Ex- they're exactly they're not your market that's not where you need to be selling your your pieces to then so i still i still am struggling with sometimes with some of my prices i feel like it can get a little higher than I, than I am now but I'm like what I was before though like how I am now is a big difference so I'm like slowly but surely getting it to the point where I'm confident enough to say yeah this is a thousand or this is 1200 or this is blah 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 and so and so forth so as I get better and more confident in my in my work I feel like I may I'll be able to express that monetarily but I feel like you know as an artist if you're really good at it especially don't sell, sell yourself short like you know, just if you feel like just shoot for the highest number that that tells you that tells the person that who's looking at your work like, damn, like she she's legit. You know what I'm saying? And there, there was people like, there's pieces that I did not think would ever get sold, but they got, got bought because I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to sell it for this price because I feel like that's how much it's worth. It's worth. So, yeah, yeah, you just got to place the worth like whatever you feel you're you're the worth, like whatever work, whatever worth you have on your work, just place it on that and go with that. Like. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> that, is, that is good. Because I remember I was having a conversation with this artist. He's a visual artist too. Mm-hmm. And I was telling him, he was still at this point, you know, trying to sell the stuff. And people say it's expensive, blah, blah, here yeah. and there. And even if he's selling, he's not making enough money. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, you're facing the wrong people. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. you feel this frustration, like people don't appreciate artwork. But mm-hmm. 
there are certain locations in every city that specific caliber or specific kind of people at certain places will or would pay more for what they see yeah i i'm, I'm so sorry to admit this my future self will be a fucking <laughs> collector yeah um, yeah i, I want to uh, be that way too I'm, 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 <laughs> Sometimes I feel scared, but I'll be <laughs> <laughs> thinking of how crazy I am. Sometimes I'll, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll be a huge collector yeah. of artwork and certain crazy stuff. <laughs> so God help me. Anyway, <laughs> so you, you, to piggyback on what you're saying, some people have to learn to change the location of where they present their work. Yeah, the yeah. The same artwork yeah. will be on at a certain place. And it will be sold for seventy five. The same artwork over there will be sold for like seventy five hundred. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Oh, yeah, she's yeah, high. Yeah. See, she's high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but now I've seen it before. Like I've seen like especially the same type of styles of painting or uh, same type of styles of artwork. Mm -hmm. Like I'll see something and then I'm like, oh, this is sold for like one something. Okay, and then like you'll see it uh, maybe like at a white. You know, nothing is white people, but for sure, if you see like a white show, it's like they have the same type of style of art. You know what I'm saying? It looks the same almost like, you know, but they're selling theirs for like 7500 or like whatever, you know, higher price. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you got that's why you got to you just got to think higher, think think higher and think more like elevate your thinking especially like you said change location or just change how you who you're marketing to mm -hmm. you know like a lot of my work I like I sell my stuff on my website and I realize a lot of my work is a lot more it's more receptive on the west coast I always ship like almost maybe 65 or 70 percent of my work is always bought from people in California mm -hmm. and people in New York so it's like I feel like I don't know there's a pattern going on I was like I feel like you know people out there might appreciate it more or you know maybe it's the bread like they get paid more there so of course it's like nothing to them hey, so no. <laughs> people where we are now I don't want to mention any name <laughs> where we are now I think it is based on specific um, areas in the city yeah, yeah, yeah. because some people always uh, spend money on certain things yeah or drink um, <laughs> drinks drinks especially yeah. drinks plural um and a bunch of stuff yeah which is relevant to them yeah so there's a market and people are buying so yeah you just have to keep fine i'm going to uh, bring your work yeah yeah okay i'm gonna show it okay yeah i want no comments but <laughs> i want you to so see it yourself <laughs> The big reveal, right? <laughs> well, well, well. What do we have here? Anyone look familiar? <laughs> Let's cover her face. You won't see the person who drew this. <laughs> so. That's her. That's my work. Yep. And Some it's available more. on my website still. And I have prints also available of this. <laughs> This this um the original version. Wow. I get a visit from the ex president. <laughs> I don't want this to be hanging in my room. I'll hide it. I'll have to probably cover it. So it's for you for grabs. Yes. You can get it. <laughs> Whoever's not afraid. <laughs> yeah. And I was telling her I'm expressing my views about this in a narrow minded way because of who I am. <laughs> but I believe you out there watching, you can deduce a lot from this painting. I see Kanye and he's wearing a hat. And the hat is red, and I'm not going to tell you what is on <laughs> if you are listening. So check the YouTube video. Context clues, or mm -hmm. check the video. Check the video. Check the video. <laughs> so, Simone, tell them, where can they find you? Okay, so <clears throat> there's three different ways you can find me. Um, you can visit my website. It's strictly, I sell all my stuff, um, my canvases, and my prints. I also sell sometimes I do hats and stuff up there but y'all free to check that out it's um the website is www.snpinred.com so I'll spell it out it's s as in Simone n as in Nicole p as in Patterson in red Dot com. So um, you can check that out. You can also email me off that website to ask for any type of commission work. 
or if you want to just ask me a question on there, you can definitely hit me up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really heavy on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, I also I normally post a lot of my stuff on Twitter. Um, Instagram, I kind of just you know I just chill on there just for personal pictures. But um, on Twitter, you can find me there. Uh, my I forgot, almost went blank what my Twitter name is. Oh, my Twitter name is Slim Bayless. It's S L I M B A E L E S S. Slim Bayless, like Skip Bayless. Um, but Bayless, like B A E L L. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, <laughs> um, on my IG, it's Gone Fishing. Like I went on to go fishing, Gone Fishing. Um, it's Gone F I S H I N. N and it's four N's. Mm-hmm. I know it's all over the place. I wish I had all this one uniform name, but I don't. But but you know. So whatever you're comfortable, whatever social media you heavily use, I have three different types that you can hit me up on from there. So yeah, that was Simone. And please don't worry. Everything she said will be in the description. Cool. So check it out. You can get to click it and get to see her. Yay. And get to see what <laughs> she does. So it was a pleasure, Simone. Thank you so I much. I really appreciate you coming yes. through. Thank you for having me. The Creativity is an Idea podcast, a source of creativity okay. for creative people. And you are creative. Thank you. So and as <laughs> always, I say this. Oh, by the way, I'm your host, Pyrick. I always say this, but I don't understand. Please stay blessed. And when you fuck up, make sure you fuck up real good to help others. I love that. I have no clue what it means. I, I love that. It well, though. But it's anyway. so chaotic, but beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck up. But when you fuck up, make sure you fuck up real good to help others. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Gang, gang. Thank you all. <laughs> and stay tuned. All right.